Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I do a lot of different stuff, so I guess this is par for the course. Uh, I got this large frying pan I've had for quite a while. Got some protective coating of grease on it uh, right now. But as I remove some of that grease, as we'll see here, for those not familiar with large frying pans, there is a very heavy sand casting under here, as well as a pre-seasoning that they do. We get some of this removed from the pan so we can take a closer look at it. We can see that, that sand casting up it close. And the problem is, is that it's not anti-stick and everything sticks to this stuff. It's quite terrible. It's a, I guess it's a cheaper pan. It's not like very expensive. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to attempt to uh, sand it away and polish it and season it. And since I made a video, you could probably imagine that I figured all this out. So watch as the adventure unfolds and I do all this, we're just going to get started. And I'm by no means a professional at this, uh, I'm going to make a couple mistakes throughout this video that I'm going to correct and also forgive me, I, I have a cold uh, this week, I'm completely congested, I'm doing the best I can uh, doing the voiceover on this one. And I draw your attention to another problem at Lodge Cookware, we can see these raised areas, kind of like a less splatter, if you would, from the casting. It's like raised bumps and just destroy any spatula you have you could also see that there are uh some areas with pitting and and lowered areas so i got some lower craters right here and just north of that some raised areas right there so there are some imperfections i could deal with the craters the raised ones gotta go so here i have uh my sandpaper a variety of different textures uh, these sandpaper discs are the same size as my Black & Decker electric sander. I thought I was getting off to a good start here. Um, let me tell you something. If you're not going to remove the existing coating on your cast iron pan, you're not getting off to a good start at all. I'll tell you that right now. Spoiler alert. So, in retrospect, you could have sprayed the entire pan with Easy Off oven cleaner and remove the coating uh you could also I, I believe just put it in your barbecue on high for uh several hours to burn off the entire coating kind of like an oven works and self-clean whatever you're gonna do don't do this what i'm doing now we'll see why well that turned out to be a regular soup sandwich I'll go through $100 worth of sandpaper before I finish this pan. Not only that, but I believe, as I come to find out later, that even if I remove the coating, the sandpaper at 60 grit is entirely ineffective at really sanding down these pans to any great degree. I think it'll remove some of the texture and thin it out, but nah, this, this just really isn't going to cut it. Also, the sander is quite large. It's very hard to fit in the pan and be effective and get those crevices and get the corners and the sides. Since these conversations now are retrospect at the time, I obviously hadn't learned anything and proceeded for a while in this direction. I did finally figure out to use a wire brush on a drill uh, to remove the seasoning caught embedded between the grains of the pan. So things were starting to look up. I finally upgraded to a grinding disc on a drill, which was a much needed improvement. Things were looking real nice. It's a flat face on the bottom. So you can hold it flush onto there, so it works like a, like a buffing wheel. As long as you hold it steady, you can get whatever angle you want. Worked out real well. Eventually, I switched to pneumatic on a bigger one, which made a real mess. I couldn't have the camera there for that. But this was, this was definitely the way to go. I was headed in the right direction with this. Hold the pan up here. Take a close look, and we could start to see sort of a shine. Just a very slight texture in there, but it's pulling everything out. Every now and again, I'd come back into the yard where the tripod is to uh, record the progress. We could see here on the top, I did more work than the bottom. We could look at the contrast. We see a lot more pitting on the bottom than the top coming out real nice. This is another half an hour later. This is the last update I took from the air compressor. The pan is now finished, as you could see, and I had coated it with a light coat of olive oil while I was hosed down the garden since I was absolutely disgusting. Then and only then I was allowed to take a shower inside the house. Uh, at this point now, uh, again, I haven't perfected this technique, and uh, I still can make mistakes along the way as I try and season this pan. I'm using this cast iron season stuff that contains like palm oil and coconut oil and some other oils of various nature. 
I wouldn't be over concerned with this product right now because not only is the preparation wrong, but the technique is wrong and the stuff that I'm using is wrong. But it's very important that we see how this progresses along the way as I, as I learn what I'm doing here. We're now looking at like the third time I'm like drying out the pan after I wash it. You get like a little bit of a flash rust that forms on top if you use any amount of, of hot water, warm water, it's, it's to be expected on cast iron. I wish I thought more about etching the cast iron than I did about washing it. So I actually heated up the pan and added a small amount of oil to it, uh, waited a few minutes, and then wiped out all of that oil to remove any residual flash rust. This part I actually got right. It's worth noting right now that even if I got all the preparation right, right now up until this point, uh, olive oil is not encouraged uh, to be used as the oil for seasoning a pan. Uh, it's got a, a much lower smoke point than other recommended oils, such as uh, grapeseed oil. So I wanted to point that out. I'm also using this stuff. I, I don't know why I did that at this time. I, I wasn't thinking. Who knows? This is was sort of ad hoc, and it was learn as I go, right? So enjoy it. Um, but we'll see what happens. Another thing I did manage to get right through all this was the applying of extremely thin coats for each interval of seasoning. That I did manage to not screw up. This is actually supposed to be 40 minutes at 325. The timer was wrong, but I did get this right. When this came out of the oven 40 minutes later, I really didn't know what to make of it. It had a, a nice golden hue forming, but it was kind of splotchy on the bottom. I wasn't sure why at the time, but I decided I was going to err on the side of maybe I was doing the right thing, so I was going to proceed onward. I was supposed to wipe it after it came out, and I didn't know that I was supposed to do that, so I didn't. When the second round came out of the oven, it, it looked a little darker than the first, right? It had this nice golden hue. But when you get, like, a little bit close to the pan, you see this splotchiness, like areas on the bottom where it didn't bond at all. Like, the metal resisted the adherence of it, especially around, like, these pittings, these holes. You can see there's nothing. The third round was getting even darker, which is nice, but the areas where it's not bonding on the bottom of the pan becoming more and more apparent uh, led me to believe that there's something about the pan or the texture of the pan where it's incapable of bonding. Also made me kind of wonder, is, is this actually seasoning or is this just like, I don't know, burnt? Or am, I, am I completely off base here in what I'm doing? I think it's time to regroup. Yeah, this is definitely garbage. This is no good. I'm going to have to start all over and see what I did wrong. As I already told you, uh, if you could see right here, I scraped it with my fingernail. I do it again, and I could just rip this right out of the pan. So this is going to be removed, and we're going to use a better method. We're going to probably use the right stuff to do the seasoning and better preparation. I'm going to go and use acid to etch the pan first for better adherence. And you can see this stuff come right off of the scotch Bright pad. Th this ain't worth nothing. So I'm going to remove this stuff. We'll find the next technique, as I said, and we'll start all over. This first mix is uh, three parts vinegar to one part water. And we had just put it in now. There's no major reaction just yet. We'll wait a second. And this is the more dilute mixture. The first one I did bubbles slowly forming at the bottom. We can see them coming up to the surface. This actually uh, increases as time goes on, more and more bubbles appear, but this is early on in the process. This pan has now been sitting about five hours. We could see all the bubbles in there. Uh, point out, you'll notice there's no rust in and around the pan whatsoever as it sits in this uh, vinegar solution. And yeah, I'm gonna scrub it. We'll see what we're looking at and if need be, do another round of vinegar. Pan is now scrubbed. I'm going to try a 6% with no dilution, 100% vinegar this round. Pan is now filled all the way to the top. I immediately see a reaction starting with the strong and non-diluted vinegar. Just a few minutes later, bubbles fill the entire pan. You see the reaction continues. I monitor the outside here. I don't want the outside to dry. If the outside dries up, we will get rust. So the outside and the rim uh, get special attention. The pan is now out of the acid bath. It's been washed and rinsed. The metal now has a very fine haze to it because it's been etched. It's no longer shiny, kind of dull appearance. That's what I'm going for. So this part of the project was successful. Looks very nice. We'll be able to continue now. 
I'm going to be using this grapeseed oil for the seasoning, but right now I'm just going to be using it to protect the pan so I can continue this project tomorrow. Again, this time I'm not metering the oil. This is purely for preservation overnight so it doesn't rust. If you look in the back here, you can see a good example of the contrast between the shine of the oil and the etched surface of the cast iron from the vinegar. Take note here, as we look at this, how the oil completely covers the surface of the pan, and there's a lot of oil in the pan. I, I didn't use it sparingly, because it's interesting how we're going to see how the pan looks tomorrow morning. Next morning, we can see that the pan has soaked up a lot of the oil like a sponge. You can see, like, dry spots in the pan. Though it is filled with oil, nothing here is rusted. It's very good. So I added a little more oil, and then I buffed the pan out as if I was trying to remove as much oil as I possibly could. And now it left a, a satiny finish, so very little oil left in the pan. And this is done with the burner on. The pan is preheated, removes moisture, and perhaps if we're putting it in the oven, which will be done right now at 300 degrees. Middle shelf is the preferred method. I'll set a timer for 10 minutes, at which time I'll increase the temperature of the oven to 400 degrees, and I'm going to remove the pan quickly as I do that. While it's increasing to 400 degrees, I take the pan out right quick. I'm wiping it down as the temperature of the oil changed, just in case any extra oil came out of the pan. I don't want any drips to appear. So just a really quick wipe down. I'm not going to wait for the oven to hit 400 degrees to put it back in. When I'm done doing this wipe down, I'll slap it right back in the oven. The oven will hit 400 degrees, and I will set the timer for one hour as soon as I put it back in. So I'm pulling the pan out of the oven. It was in the oven for an hour and then cooled down in the oven with it off for another hour to cool down really slowly. And this pan looks amazing. It has like a golden hue, like it's gold plated on the inside. Not very dark, it's just the first coat. But I am amazed at the results. I'm very happy with this surface. Let's take a closer look at it. It is not sticky at all. It, it's very slippery just a, a very thin base coat I have on here like you can see I rub it with a paper towel and take a look at the bottom of the paper towel and there's there's just no residue no nothing it is into the pan it's not coming off so this is this is showing a lot of promise we're just gonna jump right into preparations for the second coat because it's looking good so I'm just turning on the stove now to gently warm the pan. We're not trying to cook the pan here. And I'm going to disperse some oil evenly around the pan surfaces again before I buff it out to a really, really ultra-thin coat. In the oven at 300 for 10 minutes, a quick wipe, 60 minutes at 400, let it cool down for an hour. We'll look at the results when it comes out later. So here we have the second round coming out of the oven now. What we're left with now is a much darker color. It's a, a more bronze look than last time, a darker hue. Still very even, very happy with this application. I'm going to call this a success. Again, I test to see if there's any residue on the pan and the paper towel is clean. So the application was good, wasn't too much oil put in there during the baking process. And this is how nice round two looks like with a thin layer of oil applied in preparation for round three. So we could see uh, on the outside here, also on the rim, evenly applied and darkened just like the inside of the pan. It's almost like a, a layer of glass is forming in the pan. Outstanding. we we'll turn it over, apply oil to the outside as well. And I didn't mention this before, but on the outside of the pan, I have been applying oil uh, a little more liberally uh, because I'm not looking for thinner coats. I'm just looking for uh, just, just protection, outright protection. And this is basically what the outside of the pan looks like. I don't buff away everything to a satin finish. I just apply the oil, a uh, thin coat like this, and let it go. And this is round four out of the oven. No residue on the pan. The pan is slightly darker than before. So this is round four with a thin coat of oil applied in preparation for round five. This is with a nice dark hue at this point. Looking at the rim, we can see it's almost as dark as the handle at this point. Here we have round five now out of the oven. I thought I was going to stop at round five, but I see now that I'm, I'm so close to where I want to be that I decided the last minute I'm going to do 
a sixth round, and that'll be it. So we're going to prep, do a sixth round, see what we get. This is it. What you're looking at is uh, six rounds a season. This came out better than I had imagined. This was a lot of work. We're going to... We're going to stop it here. This is uh, going to go into some practical testing now. But yeah, this is absolutely wonderful. And I believe this is the standard fare for a cast iron pan torture test. It's just going to be eggs over medium. I'm using more butter than I would ever use for something like this. But this is like my first test with the pan. So I'm going a little bit crazy, but... I'm going to heat up the pan medium, not going to try and cook them quick, not going to try and burn anything in, but I'm, I'm using a lot of butter. I get that. I don't need people telling me, you're using too much butter. I don't, I don't care. So, throwing some butter in the pan. I'm going to let that heat up, and I'm heating the pan up slow. I'm definitely checking that I don't burn the butter. That's, that's probably the most important thing I'm looking at right now is temperature control of the pan. So as I move the butter around, and I, I, I believe what appears to be an appropriate temperature, I'm letting it get just a little bit hotter. I don't want it to be too runny when it goes in the pan, but I also, like I said, I don't want it to sear immediately as it goes in. We'll drop in the first egg, see what happens, moment of truth. Boom. Okay, so the first one's in. I'm not immediately thrown in the second one. I'm taking my time. I, I, I want just a, a little bit difference of temperature in the pan. So the second one is going to drop in now. And the pan was definitely a little bit hotter. For the, you could see because of the, the bubbles under the egg for the second one. And it may be the, the uh, difference of temperature between those areas of the pan. I'm not sure. But cooking's underway. If you've never heard like a, a commentary of two eggs cooking in a pan before, this is it. This is this is it right here. I'm like the Phil Rizzuto of breakfast. So I separate them, and this is the first time I'm I'm actually checking to see if if they're binding to the pan, and and we can see that they're actually not. This one just slides freely. This is the one that went in when the pan was a bit cooler. There was no searing. A little pepper, why not? salt and yeah this this egg right here the top one completely completely detaches no binding at all bottom one we can see just like part of the egg seared a little bit to the pan but only a little bit you see I think it had more to do with heat than anything as it contacted it when it was still liquid Sliding it back and forth like nothing. This one detached. We can see wh where that was. This is the first one flipped. No problem at all to flip them. This one should be easy as well. And there we go. this point I kill the heat because there's more than enough heat in the pan to, to cook these eggs to completion. This point now I'm going to attempt to slide them out of the pan onto the plate. I'm going to have to make sure that they're free first of course. And they are. Could remove the spatula, but this is this is the ultimate test, of course. And there's one and two slid right into the plate from the pan. That's mission accomplished. Most came right off with the spatula. We're going to bring the rest over to the sink after the pan cools down. We're just going to wash it in the sink, uh, see what a chore that is, if there are any challenges, and what the effects are. Now I'll be washing the pan. I'm going to be using a new sponge for the occasion. 
and this is going to be uh, cold water only with a, a touch of palm olive in there or other dish soap equivalent. Most of the pan is cleaning up really easily, no challenges whatsoever. I realized that stuff that got encrusted onto the pan, it would probably be better at this point uh, to just fill it up with a little bit of water, let it sit there for a couple minutes to soak, and then wipe it right off. Didn't realize that at the time, I'm still trying new things, so that's fine. Eventually, I, I realize this. So now I just fill it up with water let it soak for just a little bit, just on the bottom of the pan though. Obviously not the whole pan. Yeah, just a couple of minutes was all it took. I don't feel anything attached to the bottom of the pan anymore. I didn't verify wood sponge. Everything's clean now. I mean, this is just washing the frying pan, I get it. But this is a test for the seasoning, so that's why I'm going through all this trouble and documenting it. So yeah, everything's clean. Just gonna rinse the pan now, we should be done. Pan feels good, the uh, seasoning held up, everything seems fine, so I'm going to go and dry the pan off now, ensure that it's uh, thoroughly dried before I reapply any oil to it, make sure all the moisture's gone, hit the sides, I'm going to do the bottom as well. Yeah, that looks nice. Give the pan a light reoiling and it's back on the hook waiting for the next use. Well, thanks a lot for joining me on this adventure of cast iron pan modification and seasoning. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining and educational. Please hit that like button down below as well as that subscribe button. Helps me out a lot when you do. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?